Hello, this is Roland. Today I want to share with you a, a few items of interest and of importance. Number one, people have questions, okay, which they ask or which they don't ask, but I know what they're at, wanting to know. First of all, uh, yes, I am a pastor. I'm a non-denominational pastor, which means I don't belong to a church. Okay, I have my Sunday morning radio program every Sunday morning, okay, for people to listen to. It's very, it's a beautiful, it's a fun program. It's beautiful, it's entertaining, it's fun, um, good bumper music, uh, lively sometimes and other times uh, profound, okay. Um, but I don't belong to a church. So what does that mean? It means I'm free. I'm free to express what I, what comes to me from the heart, okay? And secondly, I don't have any particular dogma that I'm trying to push on anybody, okay? What, basically what I try to do is to, is to um, say, say what I see, okay? Or I try to be spontaneous. In other words, I don't have, I never have any script in front of me. Once in a while, like for example, if I'm reading from the Kabor's manuscript, the Sermon on the Mount, then I will read, you know, a couple of verses from the Sermon on the Mount and then talk, talk about those verses. But what I say when I'm talking about them is spontaneous. I don't have any notes. Nothing is pre-planned. Nothing is rehearsed. It's just what comes to me. Okay? And so, if I can speak spontaneously from the heart, but then, perhaps, see, it, it might awaken some people to see for themselves. See, that's very important. Because all around you, you have people who, who are trying to impress you in some way. They're trying to impress you, push something on you, see, perhaps overtly or very subtly. See, they're trying to seduce you into something. Um, you have people all around you that have big mouths. I'm sorry, but they, people have big mouths. And they talk about a lot of things that they really don't understand. And they say a lot of things that are just flat out wrong. And if you follow them, you'll be misled into error, perhaps tragedy. See, so every, everywhere you turn now, you have experts. See, somebody goes and sits in a college classroom for couple of years and then feels qualified to run your life, okay? Well, there's a lot of them, million, millions of them, okay? On television, on the internet, books, see, everywhere, there they are. And your own neighbor, your own wife, <laughs> your own uh, mom, your own uncle, see, telling you how to live your life. Well, when it comes to the important things in life, you have to find your way. Sure, they can, they can give you some advice on where to get your tire fixed, okay, or some advice about gardening, or, you know, where to buy gas for your car, something like that. But when it comes to the really important things in life, you have to find your own way. It's a personal journey. Nobody can do it for you. So, um, the point I'm trying to get at is that I, I speak from the heart, and it's a breath of fresh air. Now, I know that a lot of you have been traumatized when you were kids, maybe all of you, some of you more than others. Sometimes the worst, the, the most dangerous and confusing um, traumas are the ones from from parents and relatives that are seemingly nice. They have a nice job. They volunteer in the community. Everybody thinks they're nice. They say all the right things. They send you to the right school. And to all the world, they appear perfect. But there's something wrong inside of them. There's something in them. It's not even them. And it hides, see, but it can express the most subtle um, 
wickedness. Okay? Especially behind closed doors. Out in public, they appear wonderful, but when, when, then when you're home and the door is closed, they, sometimes they're extremely cruel. See? And it can be subtle. It can be comparisons. It can be a subtle rejection. See? And sometimes it takes a long time to, to see. To see. Just, you know, you find that sometimes a person finally realizes, hey, my mom hated me. She hated me because I was a, a male. She hated men because men had taken it. She hated her father. He had cheated on her mother and brought some disease home. So her mother hated him. And then she picked up her mother's hate. And her mother was also cruel to her. And through the trauma, she undoubtedly took on the spirit of her mother. And that spirit hates men and would wants to destroy them. See? It will do anything it can through the person. It's not even the person. It will do anything it can to destroy. And so there was the innocent little male child hated by this um, evil that was residing in mother. How did it get into her? Because she hated her mom and her dad, you see? So there, there it is, and it can, it can, it can, it's so confusing because it's coming through a person who seem, who's supposed to love you and who, and who, and that person feels guilty for what they do and for what they say and for their cruelty and their viciousness. And whatever they do, they feel guilty for it. And plus, they don't want other people to see and know. They want to put on a good appearance. So they bend over backwards to be extra nice. So they give you things and see, so it's, so they're, they go for to extremes. One minute witchy, the next minute too nice. Then witchy, then too nice. And sometimes it can take a long time for the person to see, you know something? My mother actually hated me. No wonder I have a low opinion of myself because of what she said to me. But it wasn't only what she said to me. It was what she subtly did to me. Okay. So I ended up taking on that low opinion of myself that she had of me because simply because I was a man, a male child. So she hated me. And so I hated her. <laughs> Didn't realize it though. I thought I loved her at the time. And I hated my dad for not being there, for letting it happen. See. And she hated him for because he failed her. And so, um, so there you were. And then you turn the hate on yourself. And the other thing is, here's the other thing. See, this is the this is the this is the trick. This is this is where you this is what you need to see, and that is that because of the cruelty to you, you resented. That cruelty. You resented the person who did it to you. Okay? You resented someone else for letting it happen. See? But you hated those people for not having for not loving you and 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 you see and guiding you properly and so on. So you hated them. Okay. Well, resentment and hatred is wrong. It's wrong to hate. Of course you were a little child. You couldn't help, you could, almost couldn't help it. What could you do as a little child? So you did all you could think of and that all you could was hate. But then you know what? You felt really guilty over that because, because hatred is wrong. Resentment is wrong. So you felt guilty. So then that guilt, the way you felt bad about yourself, that seemed to confirm their low opinion of you. They said you were no good, you were, you were lazy, you were like your dad, you're never going to amount to anything, you're going to be a drunk and just like your dad and just worthless and a millstone around her neck and, you know, she could have been happy and had a good life and she didn't have to take care of you and all these terrible things that are said, right? So you felt bad about yourself because of your resentment and therefore that feeling bad seemed to confirm whatever they said about you, you see? So now you have to see the trick. And that is that, no, you're not all the bad things that they said about you. you. The only reason you felt bad was because of the resentment. So all you have to do is let go of the resentment. See? Just let it go. Make it unimportant. See that, see that there was something operating through her that wasn't even her. Okay? Or if it was your dad, see? Or your, 
You just have to see that it wasn't. But most of the time, kids, usually dad is gone, okay? Dad was killed in the war, or dad, or they, there was a divorce, or dad ran off, or you don't even know who your dad is, so most of the time, it's, it's mom there. So she's the one that did the number on you. That's the way it usually is. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's just, you know, statistically, that's just the way it is. So, the low opinion you have of yourself was given to you by others, and you took, you took on that low opinion, plus because of your resentment. See, so let go of the resentment. Then you won't feel inferior anymore. It's the resentment that makes you feel inferior, because resentment is an inferior reaction. We all know that. We know that we should be graceful and kind and, and patient and not hate other people. We know that. So if you resent it, then you know that it makes you feel inferior, and then the suggestions come, you're no good, you're just like your rotten father, you're going to be a drunk, you're going to be an alcoholic, you're going to be a bum, you're never going to amount to anything, blah, 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 see? So you took that on because it seemed to confirm what you felt. So just let go of the resentment. Then you'll see that there's no basis. Resentment is what sustained that low opinion of yourself. Then you have to feel inferior anymore. You become free. By letting go of resentment, you become free then to become yourself, which you never did become yourself. That's the other thing. You have to become yourself. See, last in my, in my, the last program that I made in 2016, my last radio program, I read a beautiful quotation from Steve Jobs, you know, the founder of Apple Computer. He was talking to the graduating, he was giving a, 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 an address to the graduating class of Stanford University, and he told him, you've got to be yourself. Don't follow other people's opinions. Don't be bound by those. Trust your intuition. Be yourself, he said. Well, you do too, but you've never found yourself. See, so now you have to find yourself. So you might want to take a little time just to unwind. Take a little time. Get my little meditation and start to practice it. Okay, five minutes in the morning, five minutes at lunch, five minutes in the evening. Practice a little meditation. And uh, that way you learn to step back from all those negative thoughts and ideas, okay? And, and you be, then calm down, less emotional. And then just take a little time just to, just to be with yourself and find yourself. And let, let go of the baggage from the past. Just let it go, the resentments and the grudges and the hatreds. See that there was something operating through those people who ever hurt you. There was something in them. It wasn't even them. They were a captive. They weren't free. See, it controlled them. So it may not have been your real mother. You may, have, you, you may never have known your real mother. She was a captive of the spirit of her mother within her. See? So forgive. In other words, let go of the resentment and the judgment. Forgive your, your, your poor old dad, whatever he did or his acts of commission or omission. Usually it's omission. He's not there for you. Even if he was there, he was just sit, if he sat in the living room and watched football and worked in the garage and went to work, well, that was good. Okay, that part was good. So appreciate that part of him. But that he wasn't there for you emotionally, that he wasn't there to help you and guide you and set a good example and have a good spirit within him that you could identify with. If he didn't have that, okay, then just forgive him because he didn't have it. He couldn't give what he didn't have. He didn't have that agape love, emotionless love. It comes from God. So he never found God. So forgive him, okay? Well, so now you see um, that we have to become ourselves. So take a little, t take a little time just to get to know yourself and ponder some of these things and practice a little meditation and go through life, go out in the world and see it just as if you were a little child again, okay? Sitting in the back seat of the, of the car and mommy or, or daddy were driving and as you sat there, you looked out the window and saw buildings and houses and people and all kinds of wonderful things, okay? Or like you're on vacation. Just walk around like you're on vacation. See the people and marvel at the things that they do. You know, often they make mistakes, but don't hate them for it. Just marvel at it. And see the beautiful clouds and the blue sky and all the things. And just as if you were on vacation, just, a, just an observer. Go through life like you're an observer. 
not so emotionally close. Take a step back, a little bit of detachment, okay? And just watch, like when you were a little child. Just watch, just observe, okay? And then you'll be okay. All right? Now I've got, um, I've written some books that are helpful. Uh, at my website, I have a, um, a, what I call the classic meditation. It's like four parts, I think. So it's, it's see, I have the free meditation. It's, it's like six minutes long and it's free and it gets you started. You could then try the more uh, the classic one, and it has a couple of books with it. Becoming a Friend of God, it's a nice book, okay. And also, um, uh, an introduction to stress management. I think it's a little book, it's like seventy pages, but it's really good, okay. You could get those books, and then I have a book about um, some books about relationships, the myths and mysteries of marriage. It's a book a lot of people like, okay. You read that book and you'll understand your mom and dad better. And you'll be able to forgive them, see? You'll be able to see what they were missing. Nobody taught them properly, see? You can forgive them. My name is Rome.